In this video, we're going to go through intermolecular forces. So intramolecular forces are bonds, bonds that hold molecules together. So intermolecular forces are attractions between molecules or atoms or ions, uh, things that hold them together. So we have a couple different types. We're going to start with London dispersion forces, or LDF. London dispersion forces are in everything. They are the only intermolecular force in nonpolar molecules. They create a temporary dipole, and we'll look at a diagram here in just a second. And this is caused by the motion of electrons within an atom. Remember, electrons are circling the nucleus, and at any given moment, you can have more electrons on one side of the nucleus than the other, and that creates a temporary dipole. So for example, in this diagram here, you can see that I have more electrons on this side, so that would be my negative side, and then I have fewer electrons on this side, which would make this positive. Same thing occurring on my other atom, I have more electrons on this side, which would make this side negative, fewer on this side or none on this side, which would make this side positive. And as we know, opposites attract. That's London dispersion. But this is very temporary because the electrons are constantly in motion and it doesn't last for very long. Next is dipole-dipole. This occurs between molecules that have a permanent dipole. So this would only be on polar molecules. So you have a partially positive end of one molecule, and that's attracted to the partially negative end of a different molecule. Now, this is stronger when the substance involved is more polar. So you can have a larger difference, a larger polarity, and that's going to create a stronger interaction between dipoles. So here you go. So we have our negative end attracted to our positive end and it just creates this dipole-dipole interaction right here. So again, we have a difference in um, electronegativity values, which creates a dipole. This is a permanent dipole, hence the dipole-dipole interaction. All right, hydrogen bonding is a special type of dipole-dipole interaction. Now, the name is a little misleading because it's called hydrogen bonding, but it's not actually a bond, it's an attraction. It only occurs with these three bonds, HF, HO, and HN. And an easy way to remember that is it spells out phone. So let's take a look here. So both of these molecules contain hydrogen. And just because you have hydrogen in a molecule doesn't mean that it's got hydrogen bonding. But we have that HO bond right here. So because we have that HO bond, we have an attraction occurring, we have hydrogen bonding going on here. So again, you have to have a hydrogen oxygen, a hydrogen fluorine, or a hydrogen nitrogen bond within a molecule, and then you'll have hydrogen bonding, which again is not actually a bond, it's an attraction. All right, next, dipole-induced dipole. So this is an attraction that occurs between nonpolar and polar. So remember, Nonpolar has London dispersion forces, and it's very temporary. And then you have a polar molecule, which has a permanent dipole. So the very temporary negative uh, will attract with the positive end on my dipole, and then you'll have a dipole-induced dipole. Wow, try saying that three times fast. All right, next we have an ion-induced dipole. So this is where you have a nonpolar molecule and you have an ion. So again, we have our molecule here. It's nonpolar and we have a very temporary dipole. And the negative end of my um, induced dipole from the uh, London dispersion forces will attract with the positive ion right here. And we have a very temporary dipole attraction. All right, ion dipole is probably one of the strongest ones we have. So here you have a polar molecule, which is permanent, has a permanent dipole, and then you have an ion. So here the positive end is attracted to the negative ion. 
Here, the negative end is attracted to the positive ion. Like I said, this tends to be stronger than dipole-dipole forces, which remember, hydrogen bonding is a type of dipole-dipole force, so this is going to be stronger than that. So here you go. Here are the strengths. So London dispersion is the weakest, followed by dipole-induced dipole, then dipole-dipole, then hydrogen bonding, which again is a special type of dipole-dipole, and then we've got ion dipole, which is the strongest. Okay, this is important. So these are some properties that are affected from intermolecular forces. So boiling point, melting point, freezing point. If you have a stronger IMF, those points are going to be higher. So think about a nonpolar molecule. It's going to have a really low melting point because it's got very weak attraction. Whereas you've got something that has hydrogen bonding, it's going to have a much stronger IMF, and therefore it's going to have a higher melting point. Okay, Same thing because uh, the enthalpy of fusion and vaporization has to deal with phase changes. Those are also going to change. The amount of energy that's required is also going to in increase when we have stronger IMFs. Vapor pressure will go down when we increase IMF. Viscosity is essentially how quickly fluid moves when it is um, kind of at an angle. So if I had a ramp here and I had some fluid viscosity, if it is a very viscous fluid, it's going to travel very slowly down that ramp. But if I have something that has low viscosity, it's going to move very quickly down that ramp. It's going to flow very quickly, I should say. So if I have a stronger IMF, it is going to flow a lot slower. Surface tension, kind of the same thing. Surface tension is how well everything is held together. So we do uh, an activity in class where we try to fit as many drops of something as we can onto a penny. And surface tension, if we have more surface tension, you're going to be able to fit more drops of that solution onto a penny because it holds everything together much tighter. Solubility will decrease if you increase IMF. And then finally, lattice energy increases if you have stronger IMF. So again, lattice energy holding everything together. If you have a stronger IMF, obviously it's going to hold everything together. And that is a crash course in intermolecular forces.